Hey guys, it's Roast, and today I want to help you escape from Tarkov. If you're new, Tarkov can feel incredibly confusing. There's no map, there's countless different kinds of ammo and armor, and worst of all, you never know how you died. So, to help all the new Tarkov players, I put together this guide. I'll cover all kinds of basics, like how raids work, the best way to learn maps, the basics of scavenging PMC runs, how to sort out different armors and ammos, the most important keybinds, and a lot more. If you're new, make sure to subscribe, and if this video helps you out, hit that like button. Without further ado, let's get into the basics of a raid. In Tarkov, you select either scav or PMC, and then choose a map and time. Then you'll want to ensure your gear so that if you die and nobody loots it, you get it back. After that, you can find friends to party with, or you can ready up and load in. In each raid, the idea is go in, get some loot, kill some enemies, and extract with all your new stuff before the timer you see with O expires and you die. Raids can be done during the day or night, and the choice of time will affect the map. Certain enemies only spawn during certain times, and at night, if you don't have night vision equipment or a flashlight, it can be very tough to see. <clears throat> Once you spawn in, you'll need to double tap O to see your extracts and the time remaining in raid. If you haven't learned your extracts yet, escaping will be very difficult. So next, let's get into how to learn maps. If you're brand new to Tarkov, you'll need to learn the maps and extracts. I recommend sticking to one map until you learn it well, and then moving on to the others one at a time. For me, that map was Shoreline, but Customs and Woods are ones you will visit early on in quests, so feel free to try and learn those too. The best way, in my opinion, to learn maps and extracts is to play offline raids and scav raids. To do an offline raid, which is a practice run where you can't gain or lose anything, select PMC and then your map in time. The very first prompt you get after that will be for practice mode. If you'd like, you can turn scavs on or off or even adjust their difficulty. When you are starting out, you can also pull up a map from sites like Map Genie on a second monitor, and that can be very useful not only for escaping, but also for finding specific loot or knowing where scavs and players will spawn. Extracts are different for scavs and for PMCs, and some extracts are always on, but others have certain requirements like needing to pay to use them, or needing to have a scav and PMC together, or whatever, and some just won't be on. Uh, so getting a quick YouTube video on the extracts for the map you're learning can be very useful. A few quests down the line, you'll also get a compass that can help orient your, help get yourself oriented. I tended to try and loot the same places and use the same extracts when I was starting out. As a general tip, usually your extracts will be on the opposite side of the map that you spawned on, so if you're on the south side, your ex extracts will be on the far north. With the map basics covered, let's get into differences between PMC and scav runs. Scav runs will have you spawn with random gear, and you'll be neutral to other scavs. PMCs are your player character, and they have all the gear you have equipped them with. As a PMC, you also should consider everything you see as hostile, but as a scav, only PMCs are 100% hostile towards you, and even sometimes they're not if, if you find a friendly one through VoIP or something, but most of the time, things are neutral. <clears throat> PMCs scaven at the beginning of raids, so you have 30 to 45 minutes to fight, loot, and extract, whereas scavs spawn in later, typically with only 10 or 20 minutes left in raid. When playing as a scav, other scavs are neutral, but if you shoot one, other scavs in the area will turn hostile. So it's up to you to decide if the loot a scav has is worth dealing with more hostiles. PMCs and scavs level up skills separately, but they both give your account experience to get to higher levels. Now that you know how to do raid, let's talk about gear, traders, and quests. In Tarkov, there are a lot of different pieces of gear. In terms of just equipable, th equipable things, you have armor, helmet, Earpieces, tack rig, backpack, two primary guns, one secondary gun, a knife, eyewear, an armband, and a face cover. All of these items appear in your character and have different weights, capacities, and features. The main ones though to worry about are armor, helmet, earpiece, and guns. Armor comes in six different classes and a lot of different materials. The higher the classes, the better is it at stopping bullets, and the better the material the armor, the better it repairs after taking damage. Your weapons can be modded in all kinds of ways, but their caliber and fire mode will depend on the platform. Earpieces are important because in Tarkov, having a headset on actually changes how well you hear, and different headsets hear higher and lower frequencies at different volumes. In a funny twist, the bullets you use in Tarkov often matter much more than the gun you use. Since armor comes in different flavors, but typically only protects the thorax and stomach, there are two different goals with ammo and fire mode. You either want to have ammo that will go through their armor for kills to the thorax after just a, just a few shots, or you want to have bullets that do high HP damage so you can hit their unprotected areas like legs and rely on damage splashing to the protected parts. 
I'll get into health and how damage works later in the video, but if you want to learn more about Tarkov ammo and armor interactions, I use the website that I've got linked in the description. For now, let's move on to the traders and the quests. Traders are a group of merchants who have quests for you and will buy and sell all kinds of things. Each trader has different items for sale and will typically offer the best prices on the stuff that they specialize in. To quickly summarize, Prapper sells grenades and basic AK style weapons and gear, but only pays the best for grenades. Peacekeeper sells Western we weapon platforms like the M4 and uses dollars. Therapist sells medicine items and will pay the most for them and any barter items or food you find. Mechanic sells various pieces for modding weapons and pays the most for weapons and weapon parts. Fence is the garbage can of vendors and will buy anything but offers the worst prices. Ragman sells armor, backpacks, rigs, earpieces, etc. clothing gear and offers the best prices on those when selling. Skier focuses on single fire AK platforms and shotguns and snipers but typically has worse prices than his counterpart Jaeger or Mechanic. Jaeger is the last trader who you will unlock after completing a quest for Mechanic. He'll buy knives, shotguns, food, meds, snipers, and all at decent prices, but only and, and better than Mechanic and Therapist in certain cases. In general, the seller, item, the seller order for items should be Ragman, Jaeger, Therapist, Mechanic, Prapper, Skier, Peacekeeper, with Fence at, at the end as a last resort because he will buy anything the others won't. Later on, when you can access the flea market, you can buy and sell stuff to and from other players, but you have to be level 20 in order to access it. In addition to buying and selling goodies, the traders also have quests for you to do. These will have you do specific things on different maps, um, and for doing those, you'll gain reputation, XP, and other rewards like weapons or the ability to, to purchase things that were locked from the traders. Later, harder quests even give things like expanded secret pouches for getting more stuff out when you die. For now, let's move on to your hideout. The hideout in Tarkov is a base of operations where you can craft things, practice weapons in the shooting range, and even mine bitcoins as a source of passive income. Unfortunately, to do all those things, you first have to build them and then and upgrade your hideout from all the way down at level 0. You do this by finding items and raids for different stations, bringing them back, and upgrading things. At early levels, the hideout isn't very useful, but later levels give all kinds of bonuses. I love the hideout, and I have a video on how to make money with it early, so I'll link that in the top somewhere if you want to check it out. It's just a short, like, 60-second video, so it, it'll, it's just nice. Um, now that we have covered the hideout, though, let's talk about skills and how damage and health work. In Tarkov, as you do different actions like sprinting or reloading a sniper, you'll level up relevant skills. This is a system very similar to Skyrim, where the skills you use the most are the ones that you'll level the fastest. You can find the current level of your skills under that tab in Character. And when you look at each skill, you'll see your XP point right now and what exactly the level's doing. These skills level all the way to 50, so the first few levels only take a percent or so off reload time, for example. But later on when you get them to elite level, they can do things like preventing hand tremors or automatically healing bleeds after a short duration. Speaking of bleeds, let's jump into how health and damage work in Tarkov. At its core, each body part, head, thorax, arms, legs, stomach, have separate HP pools, and when the head or thorax hits zero, you die. Bleeds are one of the status effects you can have. There's a light and heavy version that will steadily drain HP from the limb and then drain it from other limbs. When body parts hit zero, there are effects like increased energy G-Gen, for example, when your stomach is at zero. Also, once a limb is at zero, it can't be damaged any further, but any shots that hit it will spread damage to the other limbs. So if you shoot someone's right leg enough, they will die, which is kind of weird. Um, and that's the idea behind ammos that do high HP damage, but not much armor pen. And this is where I'm going to segue into armors and ammos. Um, so each ammo has a armor class uh, penetration value and a HP damage value. These combine to say, I'll go through up to class 3 armor and I'll do 50 damage if I just penetrate, right? Um, there's no in game stuff for this. You can see armor classes, but you can't see bullet classes. So, again, go to those sites I've got linked in the description and they will help you out a lot when determining which ammo is good and which ammo is bad. Um, but let's get back to this idea of flesh killing people. So when animals hit just flesh, there's a small range drop off, but besides that, it'll just do its damage. There's also something called fragmentation that can cause bolts to do extra damage on a small chance, but I'm not sure if that's working or not right now. When bullets hit armor, Tarkov does a calculation based on distance, armor class, armor durability, and the angle you are hit at. 
If you're lucky, headshots will ricochet off your helmet, even if they're supposed to pierce. And if your armor is good enough, you may only take one or two damage from a blow that's supposed to do 60, right? P big deal. Each shot will do some amount of armor damage and HP damage, but if it doesn't penetrate, you don't really have to worry too much about it. Tarkov doesn't have, like I said, Tarkov doesn't have the penetration and damage values in game, but if you go to sites like that one I talked about, you can see what the values are and plan accordingly. Um, the two metas for killing people are shoot through their armor and just penetrate it and do damage to their thorax, or shoot a bunch of bullets at their legs until they fall over. Um, now with the game mechanics worked out, let's talk about the important keybinds. Tarkov has a lot, so first we'll cover the top five. Reload with R, it puts the magazine back in your rig. Double pressing R will do a combat reload, which is faster, but drops your magazine on the ground. Check your magazine with Alt-T. Since Tarkov has no visible ammo count, knowing your ammo count at all times is super important. <clears throat> B will swap your fire mode between single, full auto, or uh, burst, depending on your weapon. And T will turn flashlights and lasers off. And lastly, O and double pressing O will show the ray timer and then your extracts. And those are what I think are the most important keybinds to track of, but there's more, so let's cover some of the other important ones quickly. Pressing Q or E will let you peek a set amount. Pressing Alt and then A or D does a slow peek that you can stop at different points. And then Alt, E, or Q lets you step out a certain distance to peek corners. Free look is done with a middle mouse, and that will keep your weapon in the current direction, but it will check your sides. You can crouch at different heights for peeking over windows with, I believe the default keybind is C and then your mouse wheel scrolling up and down. Um, you can turn your laser and flash it on and off with T, but if you have a combo device, you can use control T to swap. So if you have a laser and a flashlight in one, you can have it laser only, flash it only, or laser and flash it on at the same time. Alt right click changes the mode of any attached scope, and this can... Uh, vary your zoom level or light up something in the scope or change the reticle. It, it depends on the scope you're using. You can hold breath with, and this is something you're going to have to change to yourself, but I bound mine to my mouse button, so when I see someone and I'm standing there, I'm like, all right, hold breath, because your aim will sway, and this prevents that. It's at the very bottom of your settings. Uh, scrolling your mouse wheel, change your walk speed and the volume that you're walking at. This is really important because sound is key in Tarkov. And then B swaps your fire mode, and Alt B checks your fire mode. We also have dropping the backpack with double press of Z. This helps you get around quicker if you're fighting someone or hide your loot if you're fighting someone and don't want them to take it. Um, moving items between inventories is done with a control click. Equipping items that are in an inventory that you're looting are done with Alt click. And then you can set hotkeys for meds uh, by putting them in your pockets or rig and then pressing forward to zero. And then grenades are done with pressing G. Uh, and that's all I've got on hotkeys. Thanks for watching the end, guys. If you're new, make sure to subscribe and comment below how your raids are going. I really hope you enjoyed, and uh, thanks to all my Patreons. But until next time, keep it beefy, boys. Hello there. Bye -bye.